Some mornings you wake up, drown your lack of energy in a pot of coffee and cigarette butts, and sit down to write your novel or screenplay, but an intrusive thought enters your mind. I'm too good at this storytelling thing. How can I make this whole process harder for myself and my characters while simultaneously walking a razor's edge by discussing physical handicaps? Well, my ambitious and over-caffeinated friend, you are in the right place, because today we're going to take a look at four unconventional tips for writing characters with disabilities, how these disabilities lend greater depth to a character and story, and, since I'm famous for my tact in handling delicate situations, we'll review mistakes you should definitely avoid in writing disabled characters if you don't want to be set on fire by the PC police. Make sure to watch until the end of each point for tips on avoiding that mistake. To do this, we'll be looking at Ringo from Blue Eye Samurai, the fingerless Soba master and apprentice of our slapchop hero, Mizu. So, let's see how quickly I can get myself cancelled with point number one. Let the handicap define your disabled character. Fucking nailed it. Now, for those of you that didn't immediately unsubscribe from the channel just now, you're definitely thinking to yourself, What did he say? So allow me to elaborate. In Blue Eye Samurai, we meet Ringo! in his father's noodle shop, and at first glance we think, oh, the animators didn't want to draw hands because they're a huge pain and that probably cut down on production time by 20%. And you'd be right. But, as it turns out, Ringo isn't bad at finger puppets because of animation budgeting costs. His father states he was born with this defect and that he is also a few croutons shy of a ramen bowl. I don't know what goes into ramen recipes beside tears, but, um, well, anyway... This is how Ringo's own father talks about him, and as we see from Hachi, it's how society views the humble noodle master as well. However, let's consider our first time seeing Ringo cook in his father's kitchen. He is capable. He is doing the most important job in the restaurant. He is happy. I would have killed to have a ramen noodle master in my dorm. And, for a solid moment, nobody in the audience even notices Ringo as being any different from other characters. He is presented to the audience as just another character, and while we are shown he is physically disabled, we aren't beat over the head with it. The handicap isn't used melodramatically, and Ringo isn't presented as a stereotype or token character. The disability is shown, and we keep moving, because it is his internal character that concerns us most, and how our character overcomes his apparent disadvantage. Ringo has a resilient mindset. Unwilling to quit when Mizu ties him to a tree, ready to fight when the lives of others are at risk, and adamant in his opinions when he feels his friend is going down the wrong path. He doesn't see himself as being handicapped, and he doesn't limit himself to the beliefs of others when he feels that they are wrong. That said, Ringo is defined by his handicap, but not because of what he can't do, rather because of what he still chooses to do despite his disability and the resilience he has developed because of the cruelty he faced. Which brings us to point number two. Don't make the disability easily remedied, or ignore that it exists. The same way a magic system has limits, and a world map has borders, the physical constraints of a character should force you as the writer to come up with a creative, innovative solution. In other words, don't cheat. If you're going to cut off a character's arms only to then replace them with a better set of arms, then why cut them off in the first place? You just walked me around in a circle. If a character can't walk because they lost their legs in a samurai battle, you have to figure out how they get around now and what drawbacks they might have. If they can't remember anything longer than a day because of a car accident, then you need to figure out how they make new relationships. If a character was born without fingers, how can he be apprenticed to a samurai, and how does he play front-hand, back-hand? In Blue Eye Samurai, Ringo has found some means to minimize his handicap, whether it's the bands on his wrist that allow him to use simple tools, or his knowledge of cooking, and therefore poisonous plants, which gives him the advantage when fighting a gorilla. Ringo must use his skill set to come out victorious, either despite his handicap, or because of his handicap. Growing up, you experienced this all of the time at family get-togethers. When it was time to get the beer out of the garage, nobody trusted the seven-year-old to get them without breaking any of the bottles. Then, when the cops came to Grandma's 87th birthday a few hours later, nobody thought to question you as to how Uncle Ricky fell down all those stairs. You shoulda let me get those bottles, Ricky. We see the same exact thing all the time with any character in our story. There is a flaw or constraint which limits their ability to obtain what they want, and, as a result, 
other characters overlook or underestimate them. In learning to maximize the tools they have available, our character is then able to learn something new, like the devastating effects of gravity and staircases, which is what they truly needed to learn, while simultaneously getting what they wanted. Ringo has already accomplished this at the beginning of the story, having discovered his own self-worth despite what people around him may think. He uses this misjudgment to his benefit, getting away with borderline murder because he is not viewed as a threat. However, for you as the writer, you don't get to plop down at your desk with answers to every problem a character's handicap causes. Instead, you get to spend the entire story banging your head against the wall, trying to find remedies for a character's disability, asking yourself, How does my fingerless character defeat a giant with a club? How does he rescue two samurai from a hailstorm of arrows? How does he warn the shogun of an impending attack on the castle? These are all problems that are a lot easier with fingers, but it's because the solutions are not obvious that their resolutions are so much more satisfying. That being said, the point of a character's handicap isn't just to give yourself an aneurysm and make the story more fun to watch. Instead, we need to ensure our character's disability has a purpose beyond satisfying our diversity hire checklist, which brings us to point number three. A disabled character is a prop with a purpose. So look, when we're telling a story, every character is a prop. The hero? Prop. The villain? Prop. The side characters are hardly anything more than glorified pieces of talking furniture. Think of Pee-wee's Playhouse if you're older than dirt like I am, or think of your last failed relationship if you've ever been catfished on Tinder. That being said, even props need to exist within a story to serve a purpose. Think of this as Chekhov's gun, but for people. The hunting rifle on the wall should be fired at some point in the story. The leaky faucet should cause the floor to give way at the worst time possible in the story. The character least capable of fighting should tell the warrior that she is not being a good person. We want to avoid the pointless prop who just is there to evoke pity from the audience or cast. Even Tiny Tim had a purpose beyond being adorable. So, when writing handicapped characters, we want to consider why they have a disability in the first place. And I don't mean because they were born with cerebral palsy or they got kicked by a horse. I mean, what does this disability do to enhance the story's message? You're deformed, but you're still strong. In Blue Eye Samurai, Ringo serves as a moral compass for Mizu and Taigen teaching Mizu that revenge shouldn't come at the expense of her friend's well-being, and teaching Taigen that being in service to a great cause is just as important as being great oneself. Why this message matters most coming from Ringo is because of his handicaps. Ringo takes care of Mizu every instance where she is injured, he keeps her secrets, and he even goes so far as to poison the biggest idiot in the show and then save the day despite giving his horse a ruptured disc. This is all done despite many people assuming that Ringo is useless because he can't make gang signs. When deciding to cripple one of your story's characters, mentally or physically, ask yourself why. Does a cognitive disability give them a more innocent perspective like in Forrest Gump? Does a physical disability give them the drive to prove everyone around them wrong and go further than anyone else ever would? Or does the combination of the two give a character wisdom that most other characters lack? which is our fourth point. The disability provides the character with something the other characters lack. In Blue Eye Samurai, Mizu is a cold slicer of people because she is an outcast with a hit list, which is exactly what Andre 3000 envisioned when he wrote Heya. Ten points if you get that reference. Anyway, because of her trauma, Mizu is the character we see in the show. Tigan's father was an abusive fisherman, which I understand because young Tigan was a turd taco supreme, but this relationship with his father is what led him into the life of a samurai. His trauma makes Tigan the character we see. In both cases, our characters respond to social rejection by becoming tough and calloused individuals, a lot like your palms after a romantic rejection. But Ringo didn't change despite a cruel father and careless society. Instead, Ringo kept a childlike innocence and blocked out what people said about him. He refuses to see himself the way others do. As a dog, a mistake, a monsoon. And, as a result, isn't afraid to call Mizu a bad friend when she needs to hear it, and doesn't hesitate to talk priorities with Taigen when storming the royal palace. 
It is Ringo's resilience from years of abuse which allows him to be the voice of reason when our typical hero loses their way and forgets what is truly important. He's Jiminy Cricket with a bell, a conscience when our heroes are blinded by their selfish goals and prioritize revenge or status over duty to the people around them. While Ringo lacks the physical ability to effectively wield a sword and fight like a samurai, this lack is precisely what hardened his resolve to serve a greater purpose than himself, and ultimately develop the true spirit of a samurai, even when our main heroes falter. Thank you all so much for watching. Obliterate the like button to support the channel. Also, there's a link in the description if you want to check out my book. And until next time, go tell the best stories possible. The end.